I've changed my mind about self-proclaimed AR glasses, and it's all thanks to these, the Rocket Max. Never did I consider how versatile this type of tech could be. In theory, I can fold myself into the back of an Audi TT, and although I've got a lack of space, I can watch a giant cinema screen in front of my very eyes. It's really cool, if a little uncomfortable, albeit. get out now please these are a serious piece of kit that have not just changed my mind but have also made me think that almost everyone would benefit in some way by owning a pair of these things bold statement i know but stick with me on this one because by the end of this episode you might feel the same of course the most attractive feature that everyone will love is the simple ability to watch movies on the large simulated cinema screen wherever you are whether that's shoved in the back of an audi tt or more probable on the bus train or of course when you're riding horseback through the wilderness now, unless you're some sort of lunatic and betting that you don't like public transport, at the very least, you don't love it, well, pop these on and you're immediately immersed in whatever you decide to watch. Now, there are two ways of connecting these to watch movies and other visual media, and the first is through a direct connection to your device. And this is where iPhone 15 owners will rejoice because the 15 and 15 Pro now has USB-C and we can connect and output directly to these glasses when you plug in your phone with the included USB-C cable. And that way, plugging it in, you immediately get your display on the glasses. Incidentally, I'm not sure what you can see by looking at it. I don't think you can see much. Supposedly, there's only a very small amount of leakage come through. Popping into apps like Disney Plus will display a giant cinema screen in your vision, and then you're able to lock your phone and put it in your pocket, and off you go. Now, in respect to the display quality, there's two ways you can use this. The first is just like I have been doing, that displays the image as a sort of overlay in your vision. Now, this is handy for those that want to be aware of your surroundings, but also have the ability for that cinema size display. But with that said, there are some caveats and trade-offs when using it like this. Now, although the screen is super bright, if the environment is also bright, then it does wash out some of the dark colors. How washed out it is depends largely on what you're watching. If you're watching something with lots of bright colors, then it's incredible. However, if you're watching that particular episode of Game of Thrones and you've absolutely got no hope whatsoever, and this is largely down to the fact that they've used micro OLED in the displays and that points downwards and reflects into your eyes from the lenses, which is what allows us to have that pass through vision. But because it's OLED, it offers incredible contrast, but consequently, the blacks have no illuminance, which is why darker media is more difficult in brighter environments. Now, Rocket have thankfully provided a solution to this in the form of the blackout lens, which simply clips onto the glasses on the front like that. Now these have a two-tier effect. The first making them look a lot more like sunglasses rather than some kind of medical aid. And secondly, these also block out all of the light coming from in front of you. And that makes the display crystal clear no matter what the ambient light is like. And because these use OLED, the contrast is spectacular and the colour and vibrance is spot on. It's pleasantly crisp as well with no blurring even at the extremities of the picture. I have found that if I'm getting a bit sloppy and the glasses maybe slip down on my face a bit, the very edges of the display start to blur slightly, but this is user error and not the glasses. When worn correctly, the picture is absolutely fantastic. And as for the sound, this is far better than I anticipated. It's not a booming surround sound by any stretch, but certainly comfortable to use and sounds good across a range of audio styles. With that said, the sound is projected directly into your ears while the speaker's on the back of the arms. And because of this, there's quite a lot of leakage, so you probably want to wear headphones, especially if you're using these in public, because although people can't see what sordid content you're watching, they will be able to hear what you're watching which could be quite embarrassing. Hmm. Obviously that was a bit of a joke, it's not that loud. So what I'm gonna do is I've got the mic in front of me here and I'm gonna play some stuff at full volume so that you guys can hear exactly how much leakage there is. 
don't know if you can hear that. I'm going to put the... Now what's quite cool is it's got a privacy mode. If I hold this button down, it's still really easy for me to hear. It just feels like they've lowered some of maybe the highs, some of the treble to get rid of that leakage. And it is much quieter when you listen to it from the outside. But it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference when I'm listening to it through the glasses themselves. That's pretty cool. Now there's a second way to get content on these, and that's through the Rocket Station, which is the world's first Google certified Android TV device designed for AR glasses, and is extremely important if you don't have USB-C compatible phone. Now this basically is a, a portable unit with built-in controls and runs Android TV natively. Now being the first of its kind to be licensed for use on AR glasses is pretty cool. And they sell it both separately or as a combo pack with the Rocket Max, which is called the Rocket AR Joy Pack. But the unit has five hours of battery to power the glasses and it features an internal memory of 32 gigabytes for downloading media. And because it's running Android TV, it gives you the option to download many of the usual streaming provider apps. However, currently it's not certified for Netflix natively. So you won't be able to run that without searching for a workaround, unfortunately. Of course, this isn't really an issue, especially considering that you can run Netflix through the connection to your phone if you have a USB-C compatible one. And on that, the station also allows screencasting to the glasses, so you don't actually need to physically hook your phone up to the glasses directly. Oddly, Rocket have chosen micro HDMI as the image output for this when connected to glasses rather than USB-C, which to me doesn't really make a great deal of sense. But also it has a USB-C port for charging the device. I guess maybe this is so that you can charge and use it at the same time potentially, but still slightly unusual choice. Not sure why they didn't put two USB-C ports in the bottom instead. But I think the Rocket Station is a great little piece of kit if you didn't want to use your phone. But the thing is, being able to use these with the iPhone 15 means that it's one less device to carry with you. So it's certainly a neat little solution. It definitely gets credit for being the first of its kind. But I would advise that it's only really for those that need it because your phone won't connect directly or those that don't want to maybe use your phone's internal battery. Now, as well as using this, for movies and other media. The glasses actually have some really practical applications for working too. If you treat your iPhone as a computer, pairing it to a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, then you can use the glasses as a display, giving you a workstation that has an equivalent 360 inch display, which can fit in your pocket. You can even do the same thing with devices like the iPad Air, which has the M1 chip in it, the same processor that I use to edit all of Stu's Review's episodes on. So the fact that I can bring this level of workspace with me and use it on a giant screen is particularly cool, but it goes even further than this. They have so many other practical uses. For example, if you've got a drone, you could potentially use these as FPV goggles. Some controllers do output an image, but if not, you could always use the Rocket Station to screencast the image to. Although, that would have a little bit of latency, so direct connection would be preferable, especially when flying a drone. But the thought is there. And although I'm not a drone lore expert, I do know that in the UK, you need a spotter with you if you're using FPV goggles, because the law states that you must always have eye line of your drone. Well, using these without the blackout, it could technically give you the ability to use them in FPV and keep an eye line, which might negate the need for a spotter. Hmm. I'm not sure. That will probably need looking into. But either way, using these as FPV goggles is just one of the many other uses for these. Perhaps if you're out filming something, well, hooking these up to your camera gives you the ability to view the live view of the footage on a large display that you can either black out with these or overlay the image while you're moving around. Or perhaps you want to use them for gaming with the 120 hertz refresh rate. These are actually better for gaming than many people's TVs. This sort of tech really makes me wonder about the future. Could these possibly take over televisions in houses, for example? There would certainly be a ton of benefits to this. I guess, firstly, you wouldn't have to have a gigantic hunk of black hole screen in your living room, so it would save space. 
And if future iterations of these had 60 or F, you could potentially augment the TV in a particular location and share that between anyone using the glasses in the house. Hmm. I guess another benefit is that you wouldn't even use a fraction of the energy that you're using with a regular TV. So this type of tech could save you a ton of money on your electricity bill. I mean, right now it costs me about £30 to run my TV for a month, whereas I spend about £4 a year charging my phone, which powering these glasses for nearly nine hours before it runs out of battery. So there's a huge potential here for this type of technology to replace things like TVs. And incidentally, on the subject of electricity, I did a short test just to see how much these would drain in comparison to watching something on your phone screen. Now, using the glasses for 10 minutes at full brightness and volume whilst connected to the phone used just 2% of my battery whilst watching the exact same 10 minutes of media, but using the phone's native screen used 4% of battery, twice as much. So, in fact, if you're traveling and want to watch something on your phone, you will use less battery by using these glasses than if you watch something directly on your phone screen. And for all intents and purposes, you're getting a screen that's several hundred inches larger than your phone screen. So, what's not to like about that? Now, these don't offer everything that I want. Namely, they're a little bit lacking in the augmented reality experience. And the main reason for that is that they natively lack the ability to lock a virtual screen onto a wall or in a fixed position in space so that if you turned your head, it would stay there. Instead, the screen unfortunately moves with your head. And this is primarily because they don't have any external sensors or cameras to help locate virtual images in the real world. Does it matter? Well, no, but it does mean that they're far from the augmented reality future that I want. But I guess this here is about temporary expectations. If you're planning on buying these for some magic augmented reality experience, then you'll probably be disappointed. But if you're buying them to create an immersive cinema-like experience in a package that isn't really much bigger than a pair of regular glasses, then these will totally blow you away. Now, in respect to cost, these are currently £449 on Amazon UK. And if you take a look on Amazon US, the Joy Pack, which includes both the glasses and the station, is only $499. And I believe there are occasional discounts, so it's worth dropping to the link in the description below and checking out the price for yourselves. Now, initially, in respect to the cost, my thoughts were that that was quite high. But, but, having now used them and having realised the potential use cases beyond just as a portable cinema in your pocket, I actually think that's good value. Put it this way, if you wanted to buy a pair of FPV goggles from DJI, you're looking at a total of about 600 quid alone, and those just perform one function. These do a lot more and offer that pass-through vision. The Rocket Max AR glasses have been my first introduction to video display and glasses in this form factor, and they've certainly opened up a ton of possibilities that I hadn't thought of before. But the most surprising thing has been the quality. I really wasn't sure what to expect, but being able to project such a bright and vivid screen wherever I need it is apparently way more useful than I anticipated. And I can see that these have so much more functional use than just as a media device. So much so that I think these are now going to be part of my permanent travel kit. Being able to take a flight and watch a full cinema size screen in front of me is a great distraction. And I don't particularly like flying. So these do get a thumbs up from me. Listen, I'll be around for the next few hours after this video goes live. So if you've got any questions, comments, or just want to say hi, I'll be replying to everyone down there in the comments. So drop a hi. And if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon. Look at that. That's good, isn't it?